One morning in Dayton, Tennessee, John Scopes was playing a game of tennis when he was summoned to a drugstore by a small child. John was a teacher who has recently resigned from his job and was on his way to another town in just a few days. After reaching the drugstore, Scopes was accused of teaching evolution to his general science class and he admitted to it. Howard Morgan and Harry Sheldon faced the court, two students who stepped up to tell the court about their lesson that Scopes had taught. Superintendent Walter White and Fred Robinson, the owner of the store Scopes confessed at, both testified as well. Scopes was charged with teaching evolution to his students, which was illegal in the rural religious city in Tennessee. In less than two hours, Scopes was found guilty. However, the story is much more complicated than that. A chat under the newspaper runs an item noting that the American Civil Liberties Union is seeking teachers willing to challenge the Butler Law. The ad says that the ACLU is looking for a Tennessee teacher who is willing to accept our services in testing this court in the law in the courts. Our lawyers think a friendly test case can be arranged without costing a teacher his or her job. All we need now is a willing client. Town leaders in Dayton, Tennessee find themselves a solution to their problems in this ad. They need to generate publicity and revenue. They plan to ask John Scopes to challenge the Butler Law by teaching evolution, even though the law clearly states he may not teach evolution in Tennessee. Well-known attorneys Clarence Darrow and Dudley Field Malone expressed to Scopes that they would like to represent him when the case goes to trial. On May 25, 1925, Scopes is indicted by a grand jury for violating the Butler Law. The town of Dayton quickly sets up its streets for the tourists and broadcasts the trial live. Scopes' trial is overseen by Judge Ralston and John pleads guilty. Scopes is fined $100 and the ACLU offers to pay this for him. Finally, in May of 1926, the appeal hearings are finally heard. The Tennessee Supreme Court finds the law is unconstitutional and overrules it. Finally giving peace to John Scopes, who dies 44 years after his mission was accomplished. He went on to write a book before he passed called The Center of the Storm, retelling his experiences from the trial. Courts and schools alike can still not decide on what is right and what isn't, but the brave journey of one man who gave almost everything he had to instill the idea of science into the next generation of America's marvels will never be forgotten.